welcome and thank you, thank you very much. First thing, Gran Camorra to came to Le Cordon Bleu and to Le Cordon Bleu and Homes Lane to make that dream happening. I'm super excited today because we are talking about real Spanish food, like 100% pure real. And this is from the south of Spain. So this is the online Congress from Eat Spanish, and we are so lucky to have one of the most important representatives on the Spanish gastronomy in all Australia, that this is Frank Camora. So Frank Camora, he owns Movida, uh, have plenty of restaurants around uh, with Movida, Movida name, and I think you can talk a little bit about well yeah what we're going to do i think um harvey when you suggested we showcase uh fried fish yeah i was like fantastic because that's what i like to eat for me it's like and for you i'm sure you know we're yeah. from the south of spain so i was born in barcelona but my parents are from the south and you know basically uh one of the classic example of how much the southern spaniards love fried fish is there's uh, a dish called bocarone, which is basically a fried anchovy, mm -hmm. um, and we get called bocarones in the south of Spain. It's like being called a bogan by Australian standards, yeah. basically, because it's like the classic thing. So it's like one of these dishes that's so emblematic with Spanish. So if you like bullfighting, you like soccer, and you like you know fried fish, you're a bogan in Spain. But yeah. it's delicious, <laughs> right? All it's, uh, yeah. And, and the other thing about it is like it's also um, fried fish is, is basically the origin story for for fish and chips in England, really. it's um, So I was reading the other day that there's, there's a couple of different um, thoughts about how fish and chips got to England, what, but they basically uh, centred around Spain. There, there's one where, you know, in the south of Spain, there's all these old bodegas which are making sherry, which is actually the perfect accompaniment for Spanish fried right. fish. Um, so if you are making this at home, please have a nice uh, chilled glass of fino or manzanilla. But the, the bodegas were there because really they were they were supplying um, the brandy casks back to um, and the PX casks back to to oh. England for for their whiskey. So oh. there's a lot of English trade going there, and then they tried the fried fish, took it back to England. Another theory is that it's it's people that left Jewish people that left in the 19th century started opening. So they're from Spain and then left and started opening these fish and chip shops in England. So, you know, it's it's pretty emblematically Spanish, but it's gone all over the world. And But the thing is, the Spanish fry any sort of fish, really, and all sorts of different Italian, stuff. I mean, this is pretty much like the, the, the fat, the food, I mean, the street food that we are having in Spain, and it's still mm, very, yeah. very popular. So you can go to these uh, frederias, these shops that they are just frying the fish that we are actually tasting today. So it's still like, yeah. very, very popular, and it's everywhere. And this is like the... Probably, if you are thinking in, in Andalusia and the south of Spain flavor, you will think straight up in, yeah, fried fish, pes pescaito frito, we call. Yeah. And so it's all around, all around Andalusia, but especially on the coast. And I think Fran is cooking today as well a very nice recipe of cazón. So this is yep. a perfect example in, as well, because Andalusia is not only on the coast, we have as well inland. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, Cathon is one of the dishes I'm going to show you how to do, but it's basically, it's dogfish, which is actually a type of shark, uh, which we substitute um, uh, flake for, uh, or, or sorry. Uh, gummy shark. Yeah, gummy shark, as I should say, which is basically what Australians use for flake. Very similar. Um, in fact, there's a bit of a theme in all these dishes is that, you know, like these are traditional dishes, but we have to adapt them to the fish we find in Australia. I think that's a really important thing about cooking a particular cuisine in a different country to where you're doing it is that you know, the ingredients aren't always exactly the same and you have to find ways to adapt things and try and make them as traditional. So, yes, the cathon, which is basically a, a, a fish which is lightly um, preserved using sherry vinegar and then it's taken inland and then it's fried because it's more of an inland thing, you know, rather than just on the coast. It's got many names. It's got cathon, bien me sabe, bien which me means sabe. tastes good to me. Yeah. Um, what else do they call it? Um, Japuta in Cordoba, where I'm from. Almost a very strange word, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like the, because it's so popular. Um, but, I mean, one of my favourite dishes, fried, is actually a dish called um, tortillitas de camarones. The tortillitas de camarones are little fried tortillas, but very different to the Spanish omelette tortilla or the Mexican um, you know, corn tortilla that they used to wrap. They're basically like little prawn fried fritters, right? 
and they're very particular from one part of Spain in Cadiz. Yeah, stuck with the... yeah. So they um so they they make these little fritters in Cadiz, which is right down the southwest of Spain, the most extreme south part of Spain. There's a town called San Luca de Barrameda where they make the most amazing sherry, and this particular dish comes from that particular town. There's two or three places that if you ever go, they're incredible. Anyway, a friend that I want, I get got to meet a really um well-known and respected, amazing chef there called Fernando Camorno, who has a restaurant in Cadiz called El Faro, which is famous for, for fish and traditional dishes. Um, and he and I was talking to him and, his, and I said, look, how do I make this dish back in Australia? He goes, well, he was in Japan. He was taken over to Japan to do some dinners and stuff and he wanted to do this traditional dish. And this is the way, so this is the recipe that he gave me of how to represent as easily, as, as well as possible, this little prawn fritter that is very emblematic to, to this particular part of the world that he made in, in Japan, and I'm going to show you now. So so normally these these fritters, are, they, they have a type of prawn in Spain called a camarón, which is like, you know, these are school prawns, right? If anyone's tried this, I'm going to fry some of these up. They're tiny, right? So the camarón is about a tenth the size of this. I think I'm going to try to show in YouTube for these guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. have a look. Um, and they, the, like they catch them in this area in the espetos, which is like these old salt pans that have been made into like, um, well, they have fish farms in there as well. And the local people, they'll be like, you know, just Joe Blow, some gypsies, whatever, they go in there and they catch them and they take them to the market and you go to the market in Jerez and these prawns are still jumping and you grab them. So you make, basically make a batter. You make a batter out of chickpea flour, herbs, and the stock from the prawns and you fry them and they're amazing. And they're super crispy, super delicious. Again, great with sherry. So... This is the dish that he showed me how to do. So basically, we're gonna we're gonna um, infuse our stock with the head of the prawns. So I'm gonna do about oh, I reckon I do about eight to twelve prawns, okay? Um, and then these prawns here, we're just gonna peel and we're gonna devein, okay? So we'll get all those on there. So we'll do about oh, I reckon a 12, 12 prawns or so. Um, there's about have you given the guys the recipes or the recipes will be able to yeah, online? Yeah, we can share with you guys later the yeah. The, the actual ingredients and the quantities, it's better to just look at it online. But basically it's about 300 to 400 mils of water, simmer it for about five minutes and use those heads to really infuse it. Um, a little pinch of salt in the water. Did you manage that? No? No, yet. No, yeah. so a little bit of salt in there. And just you can smell really intense prawn stock being created very quickly. Okay. So... Getting onto those, just let that simmer touch touch more. Um, just going to grab a knife. So we're going to devein these prawns, and then we're going to dice them up really quickly. Okay. So just remove what I like to call the shit tube, but you can call it something <laughs> in the intestine if you want. Um, really good, yeah. <laughs> don't have to worry about being too delicate with it. Just remove all of that. Okay, and then, as I said, the, the stock is simmering away for just a few minutes, so that's about enough time now. So we need to make sure that this stock doesn't, um, it, or the, it just cools down a little bit before we make our batter, okay? So I don't want it to be completely cold, but I want it to be, you know, just um, room temperature to warm, to blood temperature, I should say, really. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside. So I've got this lovely stock, well seasoned. I'm going to pop that into the fridge for a moment. Won't take very long. While we dice up these, so we've got enough of these, I think, pretty close to enough in a moment. Yep. yep. So once these are deveined, can I get you, Harvey, to start dicing them? Yeah. Into perfect. a nice, so about, oh, two to three mil dice, quite thin, because we want to, what we're trying to do is replicate those tiny little prawns fried in that batter, okay? So they have as well in here, in the, as you can see in the YouTube video, we mm. have this, this is the size probably of, um, it's, uh, that's gone, so this one here. You see the hand, it's tiny ones, and you can actually eat Raw or just blanch it. That's beautiful. It's like um, mm. you know, like a snack that sort you can eat snack, as well. Isn't it? Yeah, they use as well. Yeah. I can chop this one for you. That would be awesome. All right, so I'll keep the veining and I'll get you to chop away. Ready? 
So this goes into the batter raw. We don't cook it in the stock because we're gonna we're gonna fry that in in some lovely uh, olive oil as well. So Harvey was telling me that um so in Spain um we usually use what's called pomace oil, which is basically the seed of the olive. It's really quite it gives it the a flavor of an olive oil, but it doesn't burn um, quite That's as cool. hard. So yeah. we just but we're gonna use some some lighter olive oil here so we get that flavor into into that fried fish as well, which is really important. The quality of the oil is really important. The cleanliness is the most important, really. Like, it really, like, every time you use it, you need to clean that oil. You can't, like, leave it for one or two days, you know, in, in a commercial sort of sense, in a restaurant. It has to be cleaned every, every day. day. Um, and if it isn't, really, no one's going to come back to your establishment at all. And as well, so, so you know that Andalusia is very rich in olive. So they are growing massive amount of olive uh, and we are making olive oil so we are using instead of butter as we are using here in the school we are using olive oil for everything for even for pastry for everything so it's yeah. the perfect example today frying with olive oil yeah you want well, dice like that or thinner thicker? no that's perfect that's fine. it doesn't that's have fine. to be even already i mean for me like um you know seafood and spain are synonymous like there's um Statistic I know that is that the Spanish eat more seafood per capita than anyone else in the world, wow. apart from the Japanese. And the south of Spain is really the, the epicenter of that seafood consumption. They just love it. Like it is uh, such a big part of the culture. And as Javi's saying, this is the fried fish part of it is the the um, street food, the celebratory food. Yeah, you don't so really eat it at home. I don't, you at know, all. I know, and you don't no want as well. Yeah, the, the smell, smell. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You go yeah. to the bar, mm. you order some raciones, and you yeah. have like a nice portion of fresh, super fresh, and very cheap as well. So All you right. don't want to so, mess at home. Yeah. So I've got our batter here. I'm oh, sorry, I've got my stock here. I'm just going to start adding our flour and make a batter out of it. So um, we can let it cool down a bit further, but I think it'll be okay. So about equal quantities of plain flour and besan flour, which is basically chickpea flour, okay? So we want that flavor. So in it goes, just lightly dust it in there. So I'm gonna start with about four or five teaspoons of each. And then we're gonna see the thickness. Now the thickness is basically a, a thick running cream that you want, okay? So you pour, you know, the the thickening cream that you make into whipped cream, and that's kind of what we're looking for here. Okay, and it takes a bit of skill actually to actually cook it, um, the actual fritters themselves, because they're like round discs of crispness, which is what we're looking for. All right, a little bit more. Okay, so there's about four teaspoons of each. Let's see how we're looking there. Um, more of each, I reckon. We're getting pretty close. Um, and a good shot of salt as well into there. So as I said, equal quantities of plain flour, equal quantities of chickpea flour. Because we need a little bit of the gluten to be produced. So it's not the chickpea flour is amazing for flavor, but we need to be able to, you know, want it crisp and short, but we still want to be able to hold it together enough. Okay. So guys, Frank as well, he wrote with, um, with Richard, not Richard. With Richard Cornish. Richard yeah. Cornish. Couple of very interesting books. For me, it's incredible to see the real traditional recipes that we have actually the access in, in Frank's book. So, Amazing, very highly recommend you guys. It's incredible. I think it's, I don't know if we have so many people that they editing as real and traditional recipes as you are doing well, in your well, books. So well, one of those recipes, so the first book we did was basically the recipes from the restaurant. And then after that, we wrote a couple of books where we just um, researched the books, the, the recipes from the people that were cooking these, whether they're whether they were home cooks, whether they were fishermen, whether they were desserts from nuns, um, whether they were chefs. Um, basically, I just wanted to like 
write these down for my own benefit and you know and like I learned so much from it. But they were so traditional. And yeah. then you know, and then like in the restaurant as I was saying before, like we don't just take that recipe and just duplicate it. You always want to, you know, adapt it to Australia a little bit. Fried fish is one of those examples. I mean, I don't want to change so much about these dishes, but I, I know that the ingredients are not the same. They're not as accessible to me. So you just got to think a little bit outside the box. And that, yeah, yeah. But, they, but the key is that start starting point. Okay. All right, let's yeah. put that in there. There we go. And what is amazing for me as well, it's um, because in Spain, it's very big indifference between north, south, east, and west, as you know, guys. Mm. And so in this book, you can have like a real feeling all around Spain, so it's... Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes even the food in the south is, is um, it's a bit ditched on, really, because it's, 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 you know, fried fish is like this, you know, looked down upon, it's it's street food, it's not that in interesting, it's not, but to me, like, the, the food of the south has this heart and soul of Spain for me. It's, it's mm. the influence of the North African 800-year um, you know, occupation of Spain. It's the influence of this is where the new world came to, the problem is that when people go to the south, often the restaurants aren't expressing that food. It's, it's always a very similar menu, but the food at home is is amazing, like the people that eat um, when you cook that food at home compared to a lot of other other cuisines, I think. So you can see that batter's fairly thick, and I've got a few more other ingredients to go in. I've got a fair amount of chopped chives, so a bit of onion flavour. I might get you to chop a little bit more of that and a little bit more of this coriander. Yep. Um, now, because we've worked it, okay, um, like any good dough, you need to let it rest. You need to let the gluten rest so it becomes tender, it doesn't become all chewy and stretchy, okay? So we're putting as much of these herbs as, as we like, make them as, you know, intense in flavour, quite onion. Sometimes I put like strips of white onion in there as well. Um, but basically what we're looking for is a nice, um, tasty and really herby, flavoured batter, that's going to make some amazing little fritters. Mm, that's good. All right, so I'll put the rest of that in there. And salt's good. Um, you want the good yep, in there here? In there, please. And then we're going to let that rest for about 15 minutes, and we're going to come back and fry that then, okay? Um, so the next dish. So should we do the cathon, Harry? Let's go for it. Let's, yeah. So cathon is, um, as I mentioned before, gummy shark. Well, in Spain, it's um, it's a different type of shark. It's called dogfish, but it's similar. Do you mind if I get you to do cut yeah. this up for me? I'm clean the... um, and I'll make the marinade for it. So I've got some that's marinated here already, just to show you what the final product before we fry it is meant to be like. So I don't know if you can smell that, but it's really quite an aromatic marinade. Um, we've diced up the fish into little cubes, and we've marinated it in in an adobo, which is a really classic Southern Spanish marinade. It's got paprika in it um, from La Vera, so it's like a smoked paprika. It's got parsley, onions, garlic, um, freshly toasted cumin ground up in a mortar and pestle, and sherry vinegar, and water to light it down. The water's actually quite important. You need that in there, okay? So to make this marinade, um, we need this fish all diced up, and we... Importantly, always, this is, can't emphasize this enough, but we always toast the spices for what you're going to do when you need them, okay? That, the worst thing is spicing your, yeah, toasting your spices way ahead of time, or even worse, not toasting your spices, because the aroma is such an important part of it. Um, it really, you know, really makes a massive difference. So we've got some cumin seeds lightly toasting and then we're going to just grind those up in a mortar and pestle or you can do it in just a little spice grinder into a blender whatever is available um but definitely and all you need to do when you do this part of it is start to smell the aroma of the cumin start to smell it and then pull it off if you go a little bit further you're going to get a really toasted over acrid sort of flavor so as soon as you can smell cumin that's when it's done okay so we'll just give that a little bit longer Okay. All right, so luckily, as we usually say, we have a little bit of that already done here. Um, but I'm going to add the other ingredients to this marinade. So, so that's the cumin we already toasted. We're going to add that to our fish while Harvey's starting to dice it up. Um, 
Now, an onion or so, just a white onion, thinly, thinly sliced, which I'll thinly sliced in here. Okay. So that really does add a lovely flavour to that marinade. Um, and say three or four chopped, roughly chopped garlic cloves go in there. Um, the sherry vinegar, the garlic, parsley, and oregano. So um, this pimenton is probably like, for me, it's the essence of Spanish food. Um, it's really hard to get this flavor of Spanish uh, food without using pimenton in a lot of different ingredients. It's like, I often say it's like, um, you know, you wouldn't cook Italian food without Parmesan cheese. You probably wouldn't cook French food without butter. You wouldn't cook Japanese food without dashi. They're the cornerstone, the flavor, like really important. And this is the same with, with pimenton. So this is from La Vera, which is a particular region, sort of uh, east on the way to Portugal. Um, and it's quite high up, quite cold. So they, the way they dry their peppers is they actually smoke them over, um, over little fires overnight. They dry them out and then they grind it up. So you get a beautiful smoky flavour, intense flavour to it, which is really important. So, But it can be extremely overpowering, okay? So it's always better to go a bit under and not over the top, okay? Um, so we've got our cumin in there, um, our salt, which is really important, obviously. I used to use a little bit of fresh oregano and I use a little, quite a bit of dry oregano as well. And then all those dry ingredients are all mixed in really nicely. And in goes our sherry vinegar, okay? So this is quite a strong acid vinegar, really, really, really strong. So I put this in, fair bit of it. But then I use water to cover, okay? So that dilutes it enough that, um, so it still gets the acid flavor, still gets the sort of oaky flavor from the vinegar, but it just dilutes it very well. So we'll just put some water just to cover, okay? Yeah, that's a perfect marination. So it's, uh, it's as well a way to preserve the ingredients. So do remember guys when we are doing here some pure fish or we are actually preserving and especially in inland cities like Granada, Cordoba, is where you have this, um, um, this, this, this recipe is very, very popular. So that yeah. delicious. It's one of those, yeah, it's one of those things that's uh, emblematically Southern Spanish. Um, you when can I walk taste down the it, street, it's straight yeah. up, boom, oh, yeah. it's straight up. It's incredible. It's like a, a straight up a passport to, to Spain, huh? incredible. It's the smell that gets yeah, me. Um, so here we have it. So this is our, marinated fish that's been marinating there for a few hours. Um, that'll be okay if we fried it down, but it needs three to four hours really at a bare minimum. Um, ideally overnight would be even better, but um, we can go with three or four hours. We can live with that. Um, let's pop that there. All right, so what are we gonna fry it in? So there's a particular, you can go, this is such an important part of Spanish food that you go to the supermarket and you buy a particular flour that's only for frying called um, Arina, Arina de Fri, yes, which is right, yes. flour for fry. And it's basically, I was asking you before, Javi, mm -hmm. it's just, an, um, just a, a flour that isn't refined as much as, as, as a normal flour, like not as fine. Yeah. So what we use in Australia is semolina, fine semolina. So we just find a substitute for it, mm -hmm. pretty much the same thing, except it comes from the outside of the, of the grain rather than the inside of the grain, but it does exactly the same job. It's a nice, crisp outer, nice Cold and tin, crunchy, yeah. beautiful. Um, so the other thing is that you, you've worked in one of these Fria Dedos. Frideria, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it really, um, it's quite a like setup, isn't it, right? The whole- Sadly, so you have like fryer, of course, <laughs> this is like the main, but you have like a cabinet where you have, it's like a good, old wood cabinet where you have, a space, it's like a big sieve where you have the flour on it. So um, every service, of course, you are changing, you're just changing the flour, but you are using the cabinet, you are adding the fish on the cabinet. After that in the sieve, and clock, 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 you remove all the excess of flour and then straight up to the fryer. So it's um, quite interesting setup, but it's quite old I, as well. Old school, yeah. yeah. Um, in, the, uh, in our case, we're just using a sieve and a yeah. bowl. <laughs> but um, if we, yeah, wish one day we get that busy with fried fish, it'd be amazing. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is one of my favorites. Actually, you know, this is something I'd love to see in a fish and chip shop. So I reckon it's absolutely delicious. Um, it's amazing, like the gummy shark 
you know, it's caught off Apollo Bay. Like, Gumby Shark is one of the fisheries that is very local to us. It's funny that the fact that most of the fish and chip shops down the, because we have a restaurant in, in, uh, in Lawn, but most of the fish and chip shops down the Great Ocean Road in Apollo Bay use frozen imported gummy shark because it is quite an expensive fish. But, you know, it's the sort of thing that, like, you want to eat the particular fish of that of, of, of that place, right? So to me, that's that's one of the wonders of, you know, going from under the sea is, is the fish is all very local and they have a lot of day boats. So, you know, the Mediterranean, you know, most of the fish are small anyway, but there's, there's um, under the sea also has the Atlantic and a lot of the fish fisheries happen there. So they're out and about all up and back the same day. So when you go to the fish markets, the freshness is seriously unbelievable. Okay, it's it's, it's okay. something like I've never seen anywhere else in the world, maybe apart from Japan, really, mm -hmm. to be honest, like the quality and the freshness. And as well, talking about this Frederia, mm. sometimes you have a mix of fish. So just the, the fish of the day could be anything. So and fried, it could be very cheap fish. But when you are treating it that way, it's just delicious. So, yeah, even in Boquerones, it's, uh, it's one of the fish that is very difficult to find here. That's the one that we yeah. are substituting with sardines. Yep. But it's a tiny fish, very cheap as well. So this is not expensive um, ingredients, and that's why they are very popular for everyone. It's like exactly. everyday food. It is. It's, I mean... It's it's a food of everybody too. Yeah. Like it's not just you know working class poor or whatever. It's, no, it's no, basically no, everyone, everyone goes for a stroll, gets a little cartucho, and that's what we're going to serve this. Yeah, food. And we so, have here so a few. Traditionally, you have it in a, like a little cone. You're walking along, you eat it, you know. Um, and it is. It's it's exactly what the it says on the book. It's it's street food. So here we have like these little pieces. Yum. Delicious. Golden nuggets. Um, and I like the little bits of onion as well. Like the fried onion is just a little bit of acid, delicious. You get that with the um, traditionally with this dish as well. So I've cooked this on 190, okay? So a little bit hotter um, because I'm going to do such big batches. I need to come up fairly quickly, okay? But if you've got a bit of time, just leave it at 180 and it'll just take a little bit longer But 190 because now this will be the temperature will be quite low again. So, oh, there we go. There we go. Get that little rascal. And let's do another batch. Um, really important. Have you, can I get you that to season that now yeah. as well, please? So, when the fish comes out of the of the fryer, this is when you need to season. And normally I'm a big fan of, you know, great grain sea salts and all that sort of stuff. But for frying, you need to use table salt. You can't use sea salt. It really makes a massive difference to the final product because sea salt just falls straight off. You know, there's crystals. They don't stick to the fish. You just want normal table salt. It's mm -hmm. the best salt for this, I think. As well, it's like more easy to divide it evenly. I divide guess. it evenly, sticks to the actual fish as well. Yeah. doesn't fall off, so really important while it's warm. Yeah. Okay, so we have another batch. It's coming to temperature. All right, we've got a good shake. It's a messy business, but, you know, <laughs> someone's got to do it. And in it goes. Just be careful when you're putting it in, obviously. Um, give that a good stir. And the last little bit in here. That's it. So this is the traditional way to eat in the cartouche, in the cone, cartucho we call it. As I said, it's like the original fish and chips. Yeah, sadly, huh? Yeah. Well, except with the chips, no chips. <laughs> <laughs> we have more over there. Mm. Yum. 
Mm -hmm. And off we go. One more. One more. Thank you. Beautiful. The sort of thing you don't even need lemon with because it's already got the vinegary acid flavor in there. All right. All right, while we're cooking that, I'll get you to take this one I'll out. I'll get this one. Um, I'm going to bring out the, the batter, or the batter which is here. Okay, so, so kind of the batter for this is almost like when you make a... Um, when you make uh, a nice, uh, what are they called? Not a pancake, a, a crepe. Okay, so the first one is your tester, really. You want to see if you need a little bit more liquid in there or anything, but I reckon this might be a touch thick, but we're just going to give that a go. Okay, the first one and see how that goes. Because as I said before, you want it to be running cream consistency. That is more like a soft mash or, or risotto consistency. So might just pop a little bit of water in there. Let's see how that comes up. So we can always thin it out a touch, just a little bit. Because it tends to thicken up as it sits there. You know, the flour is expanding a little bit more. Okay. I think. That's about right. We're going to see how this one comes up. You want to try it? Beautiful. All right. Are we ready? Let's go. Let's go with this bad boy. So about a ladle's worth, okay? I'm going to need two of these. So we want a nice, thin, crispy batter. Frito. Okay, that's good. That's pretty just cooking in there. We we'll do a couple more in there. So it just got to make sure it doesn't stick on the bottom. Okay. To be honest, this is like my favorite tapa in the world. Like from this particular place, Casa Bilbaino, it's like, yeah, I run to it when I'm in the south of Spain. It's amazing. It's like, uh, they're super crisp. They're, they're famous for it. There's a line that people run up for it. They're, um, yeah, in this town, San Luca de Barameda. Amazing. So, you're gonna have to give this a little bit of time to crisp right up. Ooh, there we go. Mm. Oh yeah. So that's actually on, in Cadiz. So Cadiz is the the west part of Andalusia, and it's so it's incredible because the as we said before and I'll repeat again how important and how different it's from every part of uh, Spain. We have a very different gastronomy, and mm. yeah, it's a, this is I think what we are cooking right now is the perfect example in what it's the south of Spain is. I think, I mean, you know, it's, think about the ingredients. So you've got the, you know, these little tiny prawns that people go and collect from the waterways around this town. Um, you've got coriander that comes from North Africa. You've got chickpeas that come from North Africa, chickpea flour. But, and, you know, and it's, um, you know, this, it was the gateway to the new world. So Cadiz is where, you know, that region was where Columbus left to go to the Americas and where, you know, all of Spain's wealth from the Americas, yeah. which in my opinion is more about the tomatoes and peppers and the, and the potatoes than anything else, came into Spain as well. So, you know, so it's a really important part 
of uh, Spain, and the and the food sort of shows it. It's very sort of an amalgamation of all these like cultures, cuisines, and of the of where they actually are. Mm -hmm. Frank, one question. So, mm. um, Spanish gastronomy is getting, I mean, it's a very important, it's quite popular here in Australia. And how was Australia 20 years ago in terms of um, open to new flavors, open to traditional cuisine as the Spanish one? Is um, it different between today's and... I think what we 20 years ago we started... I, when we opened my meter, I saw there was a real um, interest in Spanish food. So my background is obviously Spanish, but yeah. I cooked Italian food for nearly 10 years with Guy Grossi in different restaurants of here. So, and then I went and worked in Spain. And then, and that was uh, the, for me, it was like the, um, the awakening of Spanish cuisine. It wasn't just the, well, I worked in traditional restaurant, but there was also modern Spanish food. So there was people like Ferro and Adria that re, you know, reinvented yeah. Spanish cuisine and, Um, and so there was a reawakening and there was a much bigger interest in Spanish food around that time. So right. we came into it when, you know, there was food writers and, you know, the general public were like, what, what's, what's with Spanish food? Why is that got the best restaurant in the world? You know, what, what's with all, you know. Yeah. And, the, and in Spain, I'm oh, sorry, in Australia, what was happening is mostly it was just the, what I would call the tourist food of Spain. It was mostly the gambas al or garlic prawns, you know, really bad pay, uh, Um, croquetas, which nothing wrong with those dishes if done well, but there wasn't really, you know, like I, mean, I worked yeah. in a Spanish restaurant when I was mm. at uni actually, and very like a friend of mine, um, Gerardo in, in Geelong called Bomboleo of all things. And I remember that, you know, the food we'd serve, this is when I was, you know, still a student, the food we'd serve to the customers, we wouldn't eat. He would cook a separate meal for our staff meal <laughs> for us to eat. And that was when I go, why don't we cook, why don't we cook this and give it, and he didn't yeah. believe that people would want to eat it, right? So, right. and that's my mentality, like, for me, as we've opened a little um, Mexican restaurant as well, Sarah is the chef, and all I told her was, please just cook the food that you eat at home. Yeah. Just please do that. That's all I want you to do. And that's, you know, people love good food. That's yeah. it. Simple. Honestly. Right. Mm. Um, but, Yeah. We were lucky at the time. There's definitely massive interest in Spanish food at that stage. So I've got these little really crispy little fritters coming up. Give them a little bit longer. That's incredible. So I don't know if you can actually listen it. Nice and crispy. Beautiful. So we might as well finish off the batter. Um, traditionally, they're a little bit thinner than this, um, but that's when like the the prawns themselves almost act like a bit of structure in it because they've got the the thing. So, but the flavour is so much what you know they are in Spain. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. And they're frying off in there. Let's leave it here. A little bit of haputa. All right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so are you right to look after this one? All good. All right, cool. Um, so, a couple of other things we're going to cook, which I'll bring those out while these are frying up, um, is some sardines and some sand whiting. Okay, so whiting is not a fish that you see in Spain, okay? But there's another fish called pescadilla, which is a, a small version of a hake, like a baby hake, which is quite similar to a sand whiting, in my opinion. Okay, so the whole tradition with, with um, fried food is not only is it like the fritters and the prawns and the, you know, um, you know the, the anchovies, but a lot of little fish. So the, as you were saying before, it's whatever they catch that day. So it could be, um, you yeah, know, little soles. It could be the pescadillas. Um, it's got little baby calamaris, tiny little calamaris. It's basically whatever's in the market, what it, they'll fry it, okay? <laughs> um, and, and this is one that, we, again, we have on the menu at Movita Next Door. Um, it's one of the most, most uh, popular dishes, I've got to say. And then, as I was saying before, the bocarones. So bocarones um, is, you know, the anchovy is basically like they have – it's such an important part of Spanish cuisine. They, I mean, they have a tradition – 
in um, in this is not in the south, but in Barcelona, where they they have the burying of the sardine, where they'll take a sardine at a special like religious ceremony, they put it in a coffin, and they'll procession it through the town, and then they'll bury the <laughs> sardine, right? So there's a there's a um, yeah, sorry, bury the anchovy. I mean, and sardines in Spain, like you know, they, they, they have seasons for them. Okay, like socially important things, like you, you eat sardines in a particular three or four month period, you don't eat it outside of that period, okay, because they're not fatty enough to eat, okay, so they're very particular about their fish. Now, this um, sardine, sard well, anchoa anchovy in uh, in lemon is a dish that I would not, you know, normally eat in Spain because what they do generally is the lemons there that like freshen up the anchovies from the day before because they get smelly very quickly. But I found it, I love the flavour with the sardines. So I've just sort of interpreted it for myself. So um, again, like you preserve something, but you know, the Frio they yeah. have some anchovies left over. They work a bit of lemon juice on it. And they save and one they, more day. One more day. Exactly <laughs> right. One more day. A limon, which is, you know, it's, it's the reality. So, but what I've done here um, is we've. Uh, we're going to substitute these sardines. So I wanted to show you very quickly how to uh, how to clean up a sardine um, or even an anchovy. So normally if they come whole, you would just take off the head, okay, and then rip out the, the guts in one fell swoop, okay. And then, but if they've come like this, all you need to do is Cut down there, and then you just run your finger down the back here. So from the from the tail down, okay, really, really quite easy. And then out comes the bone itself. They don't even have to use a knife to fill out a sardine. Really simple, really easy. They'll do that again. So you just cut down the belly, okay, and then you just run. Sorry? Yep. I want to put the camera. Okay. Yep. In here, if you don't mind. No. Go for it. Close it here. We can move the mm -hmm. board on here, like that. We have this camera yep. happening. Yes, here. Oh, over here. Yeah. Over here. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, as you can see, run your finger down. So not only with sardines, but with anchovies as well. Works really simply, really well. It's a very good, fast way of cleaning up fish. Um, and, you know, sardines are one of those cheap fish, but I, I reckon they're amazing to eat. Like, they're super flavoursome, so versatile as well. Um, you know, you, so many cuisines use them. Um, and, you know, they're, it's, they're, uh, they're incredibly sustainable. Like, most of the sardines in Australia aren't actually used for human consumption. Most of the sardines go for tuna um, fisheries and fish pellets for s salmon fisheries. So, you know, we have this amazing resource of quality product sardines that we don't really use for human consumption, um, and there's just so much of it out there as well. So, um, so now, saying that, you can also buy sardines already filleted as well. <laughs> that's so easier. that's pretty handy. <laughs> um, just check to see there's no, so sometimes they don't take the fins off it, so just remove the fin so you don't end up with a you know, little bit of fin um, on your teeth. Um, and then it's the marinade. So I can show you this marinade, but it's very quite simple. It's basically like two to three tablespoons of lemon juice, fresh oregano again, um, and a little bit of garlic, and that's it, okay? And then the juice is what's come out of that fish. So there's no water or anything added. It's just the juice from there. Um, and we're ready to go with, with frying the bocarones. Uh, or unless you want to maybe... I'm gonna, you want to plate it or yeah, just I put think it on? We plate it. I think we should try it first. Yeah, make sure it's good. <laughs> that's very true. Oh, yeah. Now, um, good prawny, mm. crispy. Um, Delicious. Good. Mm. All right. Um, No. So basically we have a Spanish fried fish shop going on here. And so we're going to start on the on the sardines next. So again, the sardines are very simple. 
It's straight into the into the semolina, both sides, and then into the deep fry they go. Very, very simple. So it's already been marinated. It's already got a little bit of salt in there as well. And that's it. Mm. Yum. There we go. So sardinas or anchovies in them one. Um, you can find anchovies in Australia, but it's really rare because most fishermen don't fish for it. So it's generally bycatch. If they've got nothing else to do, they'll get some some anchovies from Port Phillip Bay, but it's like super difficult. There's different varieties of anchovies as well. Like, you know, who, does anyone here like um, like a canned anchovy? No one likes canned anchovies. It's one of my favorite things. Like it's, so the Spanish are notorious for the best anchovies in the world. And that's the reason is because they come from the Atlantic. Italians um, make amazing anchovies, but they're the stuff you get on generally pizzas and they're really quite, you know, like, um, Hairy, very intense saltiness. In fact, like the Italian, most of the canneries in, in Spain, the north of Spain, were created by t Italian families that moved their operations there because they had access to the Atlantic. Yeah, go for it. Chef, in Melbourne, um, what kind of canned anchovies do we get Are those Italian or Spanish? The, they are both. Um, so generally the Italian ones are less expensive and more, like there's some decent okay ones, but they're, they're the Mediterranean ones. So the Mediterranean is a, a hotter climate water, so that's less fatty, whereas the Atlantic's a colder climate water, so the anchovies are fattier, so they make a better product. So you can get both, um, but the price difference you'll, you'll be able to tell straight away. So generally a, one anchovy is like a dollar each sort of thing for the Spanish ones compared to the other ones. Um, can I get you to take these out for me? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll put that onto a plate. All right. I mean, this is a super simple dish, but again, really tasty and a classic tapa. You know, there's nothing wrong, you know, you can, you could fancy this up quite easily. You know, you could then, you know, put it onto, you know, some sort of almond cracker with some smoked eggplants, um, the the fish and some other little garnish if you want to, or just serve it how they do it traditionally as well. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. With well, the your, I think best seller here in Australia is your anchovy with the tomato sorbet. And so I think that's a perfect sample in, Oh, how we refine, yeah, so I mean, that's that's again like a, so probably our, sing, one of our signature dishes is an anchovy, like from a can with smoked tomato sorbet on a cracker, it's a little tapa, it's been on the menu for 18 years, you can never take it off, we sell hundreds a day really, um, <laughs> and basically it's an example of what we do, so it's, it's, you know, if you go anywhere in the Mediterranean, you're going to find bread, anchovy, tomato dishes, and you, if you go to Greece, if you go to Italy, if you go to France, if you go to Turkey, um, and if you go to Spain, okay? But we're trying to use the best anchovy, and we're just tweaking it a little bit. Instead of just putting tomato on the bread, where it's like a sorbet, which is just a, a little bit more refined, a great way to sort of get your flavor, you know, you get started um, wanting to eat, basically. Uh, appetite going. How yeah, we looking there? That looks fantastic. Beautiful. Yeah. Crispy outside. Yeah. Crispy. Delicious. So, I mean, all this is all about eating it at, at a moment. So, it's not about, you know, letting it set and rest and go soggy. It's all about eating it straight away. Mm. Yum. Definitely uh, some tasty fish. <laughs> and as it comes out, make sure we give it a good like dousing of salt up. as well. And then, like I said before, it's really important. Do it as it's um, as it's still warm, so the salt sticks to it. Mm. 
All right, next one is our pescaria, which is the sand whiting. Okay, so um, you know, whiting is one of those fish that is you know, incredibly expensive. You have another piece, or can be incredibly expensive. Um, but there's different varieties of it. Very, yeah, they're not they're not exactly the same fish, obviously. But um, I think one of the most underrated ones, and again, incredibly sustainable, is um, is sand whiting. There's tons of it out there. It's never overfished. This is generally like six or seven dollars a kilo. King George White is only $40, $50 a kilo, and it is fucking delicious. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is super delicious. Um, you know, and and I know, like, my, so I'm going to show you how to cook whole fish on the bone, in the fryer, okay? It's, and it's not difficult to eat. So um, what I've done is I've removed uh, the, the spine. So just with scissors, cut the spines off. Cut the fins off both sides, super simple. Into a bowl, actually I might just do it in here, um, is, so, so we need liquid for that semolina to stick to. So we're just gonna put a bit of salt on it, which actually draws out some liquid of the fish as well, okay? That helps actually get you a little bit of a, sort of something to stick to. And then lemon juice, okay? And that is all we really need. So ideally, I'd leave that for a few minutes, four or five minutes, just to marinate a bit, maybe a little bit more salt. But all we really need it to make it work is enough um, wetness on the outside that we can now start cooking these fish. So just douse it really well into this semolina flour. And then it takes about three to four minutes in the fryer for it to cook all the way through. And this is yet yeah, again, you know, it's not just about cooking fish fillets or whatever. The Spanish will do any type of fish. They'll do, there's a restaurant which um, I went to last time I was in Spain, which is around January 2019. Uh, and it was uh, run by a guy called uh, Apu, uh, Uncle Leon, which is a three Michelin star restaurant. It took me about two years to get these two Michelin stars. It's in the south of Spain. His entire menu is seafood. In fact, he, he like he, um, he creates uh, dishes out of plankton. There's you know, researching dishes that use bioluminescence. Um, crazy food out there. But he has a, a simpler restaurant, which is um, like a taverna, like traditional food. And a lot of it is fried fish. Um, he'll use, he'll, he had a sea bass, did the entire sea bass deep fry, cut into pieces, and he ate the actual bones themselves, which is insane. Like, yeah, the spine's actually, if you fry the spine of these fish and crisp it up enough, you can actually eat the spines of these fish as well. Mm. All right. So in they go. As soon as they start changing color, we'll take them out. Yeah, this is, I reckon, out of all the dishes, this is the one that surprised you the most. It's so delicious, so sweet. As I said, really inexpensive fish, but it is the classic sort of stuff from the south, isn't it? All those Pesadilla, little fish. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. And you have like this crispiness. You can eat even part of the head as well. So it's super crisp, it's nice. And you have, yeah, eat the tail. The tail is actually delicious because it's coming nice and crispy, the tail. Mm -hmm. So all the part you can eat it. And, and you are actually eating with the hands. So yeah. when you are eating all that, it's all about, so just taking the spine, mm. the fillet you're putting in your mouth is straight up. So it's quite messy, but it's delicious. You are licking your fingers later and yeah. you are safe. I think that's the way to eat it. Definitely use your hands. Yep. Now we're looking. Mm. That looks pretty good. Beautiful. Some of those nice and brown on the outside, that's it. Yum. We're going to show you how to eat one of these, by the way. Yeah. You need to know how to do <laughs> Don't you think so? Um, I'm going to try one of these pocarones as well. So yeah, not, normally, as I said, this is going to be an anchovy. You can see, like, that's actually really crispy, and it's had nothing else but the marinade and the semolina crust. Oh, 
That's good. It's good? Mm. Oh, very nice. Um, one more one, one more dish, which is the um, um, school prawns. So you get these in, in bars as well. So they, they have the little camarones, and they do have these little slightly larger ones as well, which they fry up, and, and this is available in Australia. And it's become a real, like, I don't really common dish. People love them. It's like little fish chips. They're absolutely delicious. You eat the entire thing. Um, yeah, probably something that when I first started my Vita, I wouldn't have thought Australians would be into, like eating the whole prawn head, tail, and everything deep fried. But it shows how, like, the evolution of how what people's tastes are and, and their appetite for something different have, have gone, and we're really open to it. And so, you know, something like whole fried fish may not – you know, we, you're not just doing it with sort of yeah, Asian hungry. flavors on top. Why not normally think it would work, but people love it. And so, you know, I'll do that in a moment. But basically with these ones, it's super easy to eat. So you almost like eat it like a harmonica, right? So you get, <laughs> you do, it's like eating a sardine. You eat it like, <laughs> like that. You take it from one end and to the other. And then, yeah, it's like eating a harmonica. So it's still a bit hot, but... Oh, oh. Mm, <laughs> oh. Nice. Delicious. Like, yeah. Really sweet and really yummy. Have we got enough fish there or should I do a couple more? No, uh, there's a more. There's yeah. two more? Okay. Yum. In this particular, so some of the with fried fish dishes we've done with Arab marinades, really aromatic marinades, less aromatic marinades, and then some are just about the flavour of the fish, like in this case, right? We just want to taste the sweetness of that flesh, fried lovely in olive oil, a bit of salt, and that's all it needs. Mm. Yeah. Yum. Okay. A few more to go, then we're good. All right, so in the meantime, I'm going to do these as well. So, um, got the school prawns, which we're just going to pop into a bowl. We're not going to too fast. So we really want to cook these until they're crunchy and soft, okay? And so we give them a good dousing in salt. A little bit of lemon juice as well. And quite a bit of semolina on top of those. Oh, yeah. And in they go into our basket, shake those off. Mm. You're sorting, Chef. Am I? <laughs> we are, we are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a, uh, yes, hot work over a deep fryer all day. <laughs> I don't know if you could do this all day though, just frying fish, to be honest. That's incredible. Like, right. I still remember, I think it was my, one of my first jobs. Job. Oh, so yeah, I was like was yeah. probably 17 years yeah, old yeah. and spending yeah, in the fryer. all the night in front of the fryer. Oh. And yeah, just before it was like this smelling. Like, yeah, yeah. Kind of take the it for a few hours. Really, it? And then we used to do party on top of that. So <laughs> I tried up from the fryer. Very Spanish, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'd be smelling you on the way there. Uh, all right, how are we looking at this, Nilly? Uh, All right, so we're getting that ready. Any questions, guys, or any thoughts? No? Uh, what was the name of that fish? Uh, so that's a um, sand whiting. Um, school whitings as well as another one they call it. So, yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's sort of in the shallows. I mean, it's all very local as well. Caught locally in Victoria. 
um, and it's not very deep. You, you know when you go swimming in the beach, you see those little fish? That's what you see, those same ones, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, for how long should we manage the A minimum four hours. That was about four hours. Ideally, overnight. Yeah. And it'll go, it'll get better over a day or two. So, and it'll keep, yeah. Um, yeah. Same techniques, yeah. yeah, exactly, yep. I mean, and that's, you know, for me, you know, if you guys are working in hospitality, that's, you know, a, a lesson for me is cook the food you like to eat. Yeah. You know, I think that's how you become successful in anything. You know, I, I think, you know, obviously there's different types of restaurants, but if you're creating a restaurant that, you know, you can put your heart and soul into, it's so much easier to do your best into it, you know, unless compared to, Doing something you're only doing it because it's a job, it's a career. Yes, it's important, but I think it's very important if you want to be a chef or have a restaurant to do something you feel really passionate about. And there we go. That's about it for the fish, isn't it? Nice. Okay, guys, you're pretty lucky. We have a nice selection here. <laughs> so, what do you think about the adobo? The first, yeah? Yeah. Any yeah. feedback? So, was it strong flavor, good balance? What do you think? Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I think um, yeah. One thing about Spanish food is the um, the really lack of, of spice, as not spice, aromatic spices, but chili. So Spanish food, like we normally Spanish people can't handle hot hot food, but in Australia we've been brought up with. Asian food um, since we've been kids, so we have that, you know, you know, understanding of what hot food is. Spanish would never be able to cope with the levels of, of spiciness that we normally do. So the food is very much tamed as far as like heat, but very much up there with, with that. Well, depending on where you come from, Spain, but in the south, aromatic spicing and vinegars and you know, and that sort of stuff, but just not the the heat. Very happy with that, chef. Oh, that is fantastic. That looks great. So yeah, I mean, these little. Um, these, well, they call them in Spain camarones, which is basically like one of the most famous um, Spanish flamenco artists was named after one of these prawns because it came from this particular island where they where they catch these prawns. Um, and you know, they are yeah the, the best little fish chip ever. Super crispy, super delicious. And then you know, you could if you wanted to change it, you know, you could maybe change the the spice on it. You could add something to it on top of. This is your opportunity. But this is for me like. Oh, they are amazing as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Take it like that. Uh, wait with their fingers. <laughs> oh. Mm. Yeah, they're good, huh? Daniel Pache totalmente. Yeah, yeah. Daniel Pache. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah